is running. He's just unveiled, unveiled a huge uh, plan of his own. Congressman, thanks very much for Thank coming you. in. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about your jobs proposal. We heard a little bit from the President of the United States. He's got his ideas. Yours is the most revolutionary, shall we say. You want to cut $1 trillion in spending over how long? Over three years. But the first year is $1 trillion, balanced budget in three years. So cut a trillion the first year. The first year, and, and you want to do that by eliminating one, two, three, four, five uh, cabinet positions, right? Right. The problem we have is, I think the radicals have been in charge. The people who believe in spending and deficits don't matter, and we can be any place in the world, and you can print up money forever. And they've been doing this for about 40 years. So this is an inevitable problem that we have today. And yet, I think the country, people are waking up. People in Washington, the bureauc you know, the bureaucrats and and uh, the other politicians, the other candidates are running for this office. I think. I think they're living in a different world. Because your plan is pretty radical. Let's take a look at this. You would cut, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Department of Energy, 100,000 jobs right there, Department of Education, 4,200 jobs, Department of Commerce, 38,000 jobs, Department of Interior, 70,000 jobs, Department of Housing and Urban Development, 9,000 jobs. That's 221,000 government jobs you would seek to eliminate yeah, over three years. But they're non, they're non productive, so they go back in. They're, 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 they're non productive. Productive. They're not pro productive jobs. You a lot have of to these jobs. These people that work in these jobs, they think they're being pretty productive. <laughs> yeah, I know, but when government spends your money, they don't spend it as wisely as you do. You spend it more diligently and smartly, and the investments are much better. So governments aren't smart enough because, to do that. Because, for example, that. the Department of Energy, all of uh, America's nuclear power is related to the Department of Energy. What are you going to do with why, the, why, America's nuclear arsenal? Why, why subsidize anybody? Why subsidize nuclear over solar? I mean, let the market. So would you just get rid of the nuclear bombs that the United States has? Well, you don't need. We we have enough to blow up the world about 20 times, and people are arguing for more. And they want more military spending. I want I want less military military spending, but we can blow up the world, you know, 20 times, and they want more so weapons. So you would eliminate that nuclear arsenal? No, I wouldn't eliminate it. I have enough to defend defend our country. Your plan That's also has a huge cut in defense spending and in the number of jobs at the DOD, the Department of Defense. Right. I don't cut anything from defense. I cut military. It's a big difference. Defending this country is one thing. So explain, militarism, the, explain the difference. Militarism is buying weapons to subsidize the military-industrial complex to build weapons that we don't need. I mean, how, why do we need 7,000 drones dropping bombs and any, any speck of the earth in order to defend this country? That's so the not $700 billion a year Defense Department budget, uh, which obviously finances the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, what would it go down to in a Ron Paul administration? Well, over a period of time, drastically lower, but the first year, it's got, I think, goes down $200 billion, down to $200 $500. billion in the yeah. first year alone? Yeah. Uh, be because it, it doesn't really help us. It, it harms us by doing this. And uh, we need a stronger national defense, not a weaker one. Just spending money do doesn't necessarily help I us. I suspect that when it comes to this issue, defense spending, you're further apart from your fellow Republican candidates than you are from the Democrats. Yeah, but I'm closer to the people and I'm closer to the military. I get more money from the military, active military duty, twice as much as all the other Republican candidates put together. The military people know exactly what I'm talking about. They know these wars aren't going well and that we shouldn't be there. We we literally, in the last 10 years, have added $4 trillion of our debt because of this militarism around the world. Because so, I remember you and Barney Frank have actually uh, cooperated we, in seeking to cut defense spending. Yes, and I think, uh, I think the American people know this. Uh, I think they're tired of paying for Germany's, Germany's defense, Japan and South Korea. I mean, what's the purpose? So is this going to resonate in a Republican presidential contest? Because right now, uh, you're, you're trying to get the Republican presidential nomination. No. You go out there, uh, are Republican voters in Iowa, New Hampshire, and Florida, South Carolina, are they going to listen to you? So far, so good. I think it's doing very well. And I think they, when they hear the truth, they know they're hearing the truth. And I, I really think the people are way ahead of the politicians. I've believed this for many, many years. And that's why you have to have Tea Party movements and, and sit-ins on Wall Street, because the people are annoyed with this. They know these bailouts and expending cannot last. We cannot continue to do this. Our national debt goes up $4 billion a day. I mean, where are we going to attack? I think the easiest place to attack is overseas. All the foreign aid and all the militarism. So you bring not, all the foreign aid to zero? 
Sure. I mean, uh, unless you want to donate it yourself. Everybody can donate what they ever, and they're going to be richer, and they can pick out their friends and their country, and it used to be that way. You've been in some major disputes in other presidential debates with Republican candidates over U.S. policy towards Iran. Last week, the Justice Department said that Iran... Uh, at the highest levels, they didn't go how high, at the highest levels, they said, was seeking to assassinate the Saudi ambassador in Washington. If you were president and that report came to you from your CIA, your Justice Department, your FBI, what would you do about that? I'd uh, check it very carefully for the facts because now the facts are, are filtering out. They've arrested him and that's fine. He could be a very dangerous person. Maybe he'll get a day in court, but I predict they won't because I, th I don't think they have much concrete evidence. But at least he's captured and he's in, in a court and there's going to do it. But well, the why do you think they don't have because uh, various Republicans and Democrats, uh, Mike Rogers, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, you know him, he believes that these, uh, these, the evidence is strong. Diane Feinstein, the chairman. I think it's, well, I think it's, I think it's mostly war propaganda. They're been itching to go to war against Iran for a long, long time. This is exactly what they did leading up to the war in Iraq, and the, and the danger was not there. I don't think the Iranians are that stupid, and and yet the people here right now are getting pretty excited about it. See, people giving us this this information gave us Fast and Furious. Why they don't? They're, they're having investigations in Washington. Fast and Furious is a fraud, but all of a sudden they believe this. No, the same people are telling us the same thing. They need to look at it very carefully as president, I would look at this type of intelligence very carefully. I certainly wouldn't advocate going into another war. These people are using this this one episode possibility of this one guy doing something. Was it a sting operation? We don't know. People are suggesting we go to war over there. And I just want to that make, is such a careless attitude. I just want to make sure, you, when I heard you right, you said these allegations are war propaganda on the part of the Obama administration. Is I that what you're the saying? Pe no, the people who are jumping up and down and say, oh, this is wonderful, wonderful. It's all all the way up to the top. Yes, I think people who are suggesting that this is a horrendous problem uh, would like to see us to go to war against Iran. That They've been preaching this for years. I mean, they're just looking for the opportunity. What I'm saying, he's a bad guy. He's off the streets. Give him his day in court. But let's wait and see if he really does get a day in court and we get all the facts on the table. That's what I would demand. Congressman Paul, as usual, thanks for coming in. Thank Next you. time you have to tell us how you really think. Okay, we'll, we'll work on it. <laughs> Good work. Thanks very much. Uh, please be sure to join uh, Ron Paul, all of the other Republican presidential candidates.